Hello, I'm Ellie for Edu for Java and in this tutorial we're going to see polymorphies in object-oriented programming. We have a definition here in the page. Polymorphism is the ability of an object to take on many forms. The most common use of polymorphism occurs when a parent class reference is used to refer to a child class object. Any Java object that can pass more than one is a test is considered to be polymorphic. As you know, in Java, all Java objects are polymorphic since any object we pass the ES is a test for their own type and for the class object. It is important to know that the only possible way to access an object is through a reference variable. A reference variable can be only one type. Once declared, the type of a reference variable cannot be changed. Okay, um, there's a lot of definitions for polymorphism. This is the one I like best. You can read it carefully because it's difficult to um, understand the concept. Let's take a look at an example to try to understand it. In Eclipse, we create a new Java project. We call it Polymorphism. And we create a new class called A. A new class called B. We want A to look as B. So we have to make A extend from B. In B, we are going to write a method print that we have here in the page. To make it quicker. And we make, we make it print B. In class, we, in class A, we are going to override this method printing A. Now we are going to create another class called main. This class main uses A and B. We include a main method and we create a new array of B. It's really two first, two positions in the array. We are going to first put the position A and B the position 1 and 2, like this. Here in this instruction is the first trick. We write a new A. In an array of Bs, we are inserting an A. We can do this because as A extends from B, there is no syntax, syntax problem. Okay, now we're going to create a new method, naive printer, which is going to be in charge of the printing of the bees. This method here. We ask Eclipse to help us. There it is. We copy the four from inside. There we are. Here we have the uh, four iterating over the array and printing each one of the elements of the array. Let's save and run the program. B and A. The method iterates over the array of Bs. It thinks that they are all Bs. It doesn't know about an A. The class B as we've seen, has a print method, so there's no problem. It calls the method print and it prints. What happened in the case of A? In the second iteration of the four, when it got uh, the element in the position one, it received an A. This A 
tweaked the method, making it think that it was a B. Everything worked even if the method doesn't know about class A. This is very powerful. Think that this method, this one, is developed by one programmer and is made by another. This is developed by T1, for example, and this by T2. T1 discovers one day that they need another object. We create a new class C. It also extends from B and it has the same method, but it prints C. Now we add another element to the array. In position 2, we have a C. We have to change the array for three elements. Let's run the program. Notice that we have created another object C, which is going to, task to, pass, to try to pass as a B in the array. The method, method naive printer doesn't know about the new class C. It only knows about class B. When we take a look at patterns or design of applications, we're going to see that this is very powerful. If, for example, Team 1, which developed this, wants to make a change in its code, Team 2 doesn't even have to know. Team 2 doesn't have to do anything. It doesn't have to develop anything, and this is very important. When the programs become very big and there is a lot of classes, it is very important when we have to change something, not to have to change it everywhere. Polymorphisms is a very powerful tool to avoid this. Polymorphisms might be the most powerful tool in object-oriented programming. Okay, this is all for this tutorial. See you in the next one. Bye.